Welcome to Blueprint, everybody. Ray Keith in the building on a Friday between three and five. And this is what we do. Rolling out to Jungle. And also a very special guest today, who you can't quite see him, is the mighty Pilgrim all the way from up north. Wolverhampton, you still up there? Yeah, <laughs> Here you go, a legendary rave jungle DJ in the building. Ray Keith's Blueprint, Pilgrim today. A blast from the past, so if you remember Fantasia and Quest and Pandemonium, that's what we're talking about today. Picking up my Midlands, I'm up north, massive. Picking up everybody that tuned into the Dread Recording Show yesterday. Picking up Marga Man as well. Two hours of music today and also interviews with one of the legendary Rave Jungle DJs. Pilgrim. Big things. Don't forget to name check us in about 15, 20 minutes time. We will be live in the interview and then we'll be jumping into the mix as well. Keep it locked. It's Ray Keith. It's Blueprint. It's Friday. Some jungle business. Ray Keith. Oh, 
Blueprint with Reiki. Right, going to send out a few name checks as uh, people are getting involved. Uh, Patricia M.I., Mark Newman, DJ Gremlin, Mark Smith, Danny G. whole heap of people are locked in right now. We're going to do you as many shouts as we can. I'll send this one out to Tyler D. Also my bridging Dean. Here we are in the building, Blueprint, Radar. Some original Dillinger business. Wow, it just seems like yesterday. So this went out to Jay Owen as well, Mark Sweeney. It's Friday, people, that Friday feeling. The weekend's here already. So this went out to Jeff Selby's. Keep those shouts coming in whilst we're just warming you up nicely. And keep sharing, people. We want to get at least 100 shares today and at least 100 or 150 people live. So this went out to Rab Nesbitt. Sean Robertson, big up your chest. Also, Heather Claire Lander, Dave O'Brien. Keep those shouts coming in, people. Massive, massive, massive. Shouts out to Strawberry Payback, Massive, and Stardust Crew and the Junglist Network. And that's personally from a man himself, Pilgrim, but he's going to be doing his thing. Keep sharing, people. Keep them shouts coming in. Let's get 100 people locked in right now. At least, David O'Brien, as I said, pick up your chest. Keep them shouts coming in. Mark Smith. Uh, I love the main tag I mean, on the LP. Oh, yeah, that was a big tune as well. Uh, on the other side of this, this is Unexplored ter 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 Terrain, sorry, by Dillinger. I sent this one out to Dave Silk. This was a big tune. My tune my, it's actually a little bit warped, you can see there, but... It plays lovely. God bless the new needles from the radar backstaff. Uh, so this one has a Heather Lander, uh, Michael Rained, Drain. Big up, Ray. I bought three tunes from you. Big up. God bless you. Thank you very much. Keep that jungle flowing. Keep those shouts coming in. Please keep sharing. Bigging up Marga Man for yesterday. Uh, also send this one out to DJ Gremlin and also Richie Johnson, who's just locked in. Wow. Pilgrim in the building. We're going to take you right back today to some early rave jungle business. Here we go. Peace.
I'm sure you all know this tune, one of the killers from back in the day. Thought I'd just draw this one out today. Who knows what this tune is? Quite a few people hitting it and asking what it is and others replying. It's pretty dark. That's a clue. There you go.
Welcome, Mr. Pilgrim. How are you, my friend? I'm very well. I'm very glad you made it today as well. You've come a long way. Always a pleasure. Um, absolute. On the other side of Wolverhampton, and just looking back at the history, um, you were resident at Quest, Pandemonium, Fantasia. Yeah, yeah. The list goes on. Can I have a little bit more um, mic level, please? It seems to have gone down a little bit. Thank you very much. Um, bigging up this tune, this is Lie Lie Die. This is a big tune, my V Recordings family. Um, tell us a little bit about how you started in, in, in the whole game. And I okay. mean, we, we're, we're talking like early hardcore when we all started. Wow, well, before that, I mean, I'm probably going back to about 87 when I first got into DJing. So, uh, like a lot of people, I got into it view, through the uh, hip hop side of things. I was doing tur turntablism, scratching up. Uh, got into the rave scene about 1990, and I think what made it for me, everyone started to know about me when uh, Quest hit. Yeah. Quest was just a very unique club, and it was just one of a kind, and it was a, it was pretty much like an all-nighter every week, and yeah. it, it was a two o'clock finish. I mean, as you know, you were there many times yourself as well. Because all real, yeah, all, all of us from Groove Connection were kind of put on rotation now, yeah. and it was one of the places. Um, uh, it was one of the places that. Um, that you used to go to on a regular because there was Amnesia House, obviously. Yeah. There was Quest. Amnesia was, um, we used to do that, uh, sorry, Eclipse in Coventry, Amnesia. And then obviously Quest had such a big impact as well. Yeah. Because apart from l the later on years going to the Institute, um, it was like a foothold for Jungle Drum and Bass. Sorry, they're just adjusting the mic. Okay. It's all good. <laughs> um, and, um, like, you know, tell us about those days, because they were special days. I mean, um, the, the Back to Basics boys, you know, th they did their thing up there as well. Yeah, A lot yeah. of tunes got broken up there. How did you got, get your break there? I suppose for me, really, my break came through Quest. So I was pushing through on the scene anyway, but I think as Quest kind of made Who, it, who was the organisers? There was two keys. Yeah, there? there was Carl Peddy and there was Gerald Bailey. So, Gerald, uh, yeah. that's who I used to deal with. Yeah, Gerald. Yeah. Big up Gerald if you're watching, bruv. We love you. Like, <laughs> If it wasn't for people like you, we wouldn't have been going as far as what we'd been doing in the first place. And I mean, I mean that club, it was banging. Yeah. And, you know, and it was, an, it was nuts because you'd have... Bookham, me, Frost, Fabio, you, um, Ned like Ryder Ned as Ryder. well. Ratty as well. Ratty as well. Yeah. I've got big up Ned Ryder, Ratty. Gache, I've, Donovan Gache. Smith. Seduction, he was up there. Yeah, Kenny and Randall. Kenny and Randall. Mickey Top Finn. Buzz. Yeah, Mickey. All the big names, everyone was there. It's crazy. Yeah. Rat Pack. Food Junkie as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. there was a lot of like, London DJs that like came up as well. And uh, there was people like Cool and Flex. There was all sorts because they always did a lot of theme nights, North meets South. So there was Groove Connection nights. There was AWOL nights. There was just everything there. How many? Um, and that was on weekly, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, it was yeah, one it was. of the, How long did that run for? Um, I mean, I've got flyers. I was looking at the other day, just digging them out in the attic that go back. Uh, I've seen flyers like 96. So really? it was running for a fair few years because I think what happened is the quest itself was like drum and bass and then it started to veer more towards like you had the jungle stuff. So you had Amazon that was breaking through and I think that at the time Amazon kind of took over and it was a, a big name itself in like the Wolverhampton surrounding areas. So I think after that quest kind of stopped and Amazon took over for a few years. Tell us about Pandemonium. That was another big one that you used to play at. Yeah. And also... Um, uh, uh, I mean, he was resident there. There was flashback as well. Yeah. Um, and they were all Midlands based. Definitely. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and to get a residency as well and be playing every week. And then obviously you started in production. So what was like going back? What, what type of music did mum and dad play in the house? When you were oh, okay. Up? Oh, mum and dad. Oh, ah. My dad loved Nat King Cole. Okay. Yeah, my mom. She was into the Beatles. Okay. So, um, yeah, because my dad, because he comes from Barbados, he had that like kind of Bayesian roots in him, and uh, he loved his Nat King Cole stuff. Okay. But um, I suppose, really, my first ever kind of musical taste that I can recall, musical youth, I used to love them. Okay. Uh, Madness, special, so I did like my two-tone stuff as well. I think it was about 1985, I kind of, about 84, 85, I discovered hip-hop. A uh, good friend of mine at the time, he was like heavily into the music. So, um, so you cut, you watched all the DMC, Cash Money. Yeah, yeah, I loved all that stuff. I kind right. of studied uh, Cash Money, yeah. watched him, knew all the routine. 
did a little bit out of myself where like you do like one and one deck and but another and spinning lot, there round. There was Ratty as well. He used to scratch. Yeah, I yeah. If I remember rightly, you. Um, not so much Ned. He was he was more of a DJ. Yeah, DJ. Yeah, yeah. He just yeah. like mix and blend. That's Ned it. Was. It was just straight through. But I remember Ratty, you uh, obviously even Seduction then obviously hype. Yeah, you know what I mean? so like, I did the summer as well. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, DJ size. So yeah. and what was it like? Uh, what, what was your first rave tune that you heard? I oh. hope you brought uh, three tracks with you yeah, today. Yeah, I've got my three tracks. Don't okay, worry about wicked. that. Um, Actually, I need the CD because you're, you're one of the ones that have come with the CD. So we'll take that after we've played oh, okay. that tune. That's actually on a USB, that one is. Oh, it's wicked. actually on that USB that I gave you. Okay, so uh, cool. I'll have I've to dig that, that out. Um, I think for me, probably, if you're talking rave, first track for me, probably some people would class it as house now, but Adonis, No Way Back. Okay. Um, and where did you hear that? Was you out in a warehouse? Oh. Are you raving? Yeah, there was a club that I used to go to on a Wednesday night. It was called the Lord Raglan. And they used to play a little bit of hip-hop. It was the only place that you could go in Wolverhampton where you could actually hear hip-hop. And they used to play about 5% hip-hop, and then the rest was like all rave stuff. So I used to go there because it was the only club that you could go to. And I was like, when the rave stuff came on, I was chuntering away. And it was like, oh, what's this rubbish? And then like, gradually, as I went more and more, you got used to it. And the next thing I know, I was jumping around, dancing to that as well. So... Uh, kind of drifted from the hip-hop over to the rave scene because the rave scene, it just seemed like there was more excitement, more of a buzz going on with it. So uh, from there, I just adopted my scratchy and my techniques with regards to DJing, crossed it over to the rave, and then it was just a case of from there, just getting on a few promotion nights, and we approached the people from Quest. Me and a few of my mates, we actually approached them and we looked at doing a night ourselves. And then a few weeks later, the guys, they approached me and says, we're going to do a night. And I think a lot of people like Dave Silt will remember this. It was uh, in uh, 1991, legendary night. There was myself on there. There was Rath. There was Top Buzz. That was the first one that they ever did. It was a huge success. And from there, they decided to do it weekly. Wicked. And going back to even those those DJs uh, back in the day, I mean, and they they you know top buzz. Let's not forget. I'm gonna get Jason K and Pat and everybody on, but Fantasy Top Buzz. They were one of the original DJs and Mickey Finn yeah. that that were, were really um, conquering the north. If you if you know what I mean, Definitely. because they were the first DJs to kind of test the water up yeah. there. And I remember playing many times after Mickey Finn feeling like I wanted to crawl under a rock <laughs> because the, the, the adulation that you get on the decks but it was great because yeah. I'd only just started venturing out from the Astoria days um, tell us a little bit about your um, so your first jungle tune that you heard that you listened to that you just thought yeah this is kind of because your production you've done a lot of music yeah. and, and you've done stuff with Ned Ryder as well yeah. collabs yeah. so we'll talk a little bit about that but um, when was the first jungle tune that came along and you just thought from the rave days or the hardcore days and it plugged in and you just thought to yourself shit because for the people who don't know and who were living in London and yeah. they had the paradise and all the rest of it yeah. there was parallel scenes going on up north that was still doing the same thing yeah. that everybody was connected with the tape packs do you know what I'm saying yeah. then you had the slamming vinyls and the, and then amnesias and all the rest of it even Quest back in the day so yeah. and everyone was connected through the music so tell us a little bit about that kind of link yeah I think really for me like the first ever kind of jungle style trap that I heard I mean back about 90 I'd say about early 92 there was a lot of the early IB for records stuff that was very kind of jungle techno so it was a bit jungly as well and you'd got M beat that were coming through as well oh by the way big up M beat you know I had dinner with him <laughs> uh, well I say dinner we, we, we had a drink and, and, and lunch and um, I haven't seen him properly for like 20 years so big up M beat I'm funny you should say yeah that, joggy yeah. memory Ma yeah Marlon big up your chest my bre my bridge yeah sorry sorry to but yeah um, I think for me first jungle record really that I can like that sticks in my mind really was a guy called Gerald the uh, the bad boy tune because I just, seven gun bad boy. that's the one yeah Big tune. yeah because it was it was just typical like jungle you've got like the Glock on it and uh, the beginning of it I always used to scratch up the bad boy bit into my tracks because I suppose that was really like my, my trademark because everyone used to call me the hardcore bad boy. Okay, so that, and obviously you DJed on the hardcore scene as well. So yeah, and doing the junk because most of you guys did. That's what, why it worked at Slamming. Yeah, because everyone was kind of, I suppose, putting their hand in the honey pot and having a little mixture. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and tell us. So that was the first one. And when was the first production that you did? 
Ooh. And, what, and, and how did you meet Ned Ryder? Okay. Ned Ryder, I mean, he basically was, uh, he started DJing at Quest as one. He became a resident and playing there regular. So um, I've known Ned many, many years. He was on the scene as well before the rave scene. He used to go to the Lord Raglan. So uh, I remember he used to work at McDonald's actually as a manager. So that's how uh, I used to uh, come across Ned, that we used to hang around together outside uh, McDonald's around Wolverhampton. Um, but yeah, it's funny that a lot of people that from like the late 80s, then went on to the rave scene and it was just that same circle you just saw people on a regular basis but uh production wise i think my first ever track that i can recall was on uh it was called free scars label and it was a track that i did with sammy called can you feel it uh it wasn't so much jungly at the time because i suppose back then you had like music that was a bit more like you had vocals pianos you had the break beats in there so i suppose it was classed as a break beat track more so than the jungle track. Uh, I did some tracks uh, with uh, the Back to Basics lads from Wensbury. So one of those, I think you played on your show a few weeks back as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the one with uh, me and Ned, uh, Face of the Deep. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, so I've done a few. What's, the, what the, what's Ned up to now? What's Back to Basics up to? Ah, I don't know anything about the Back to Basics guys. I've got Jason, no idea. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they used to have the record shop as well, didn't That's they? That's right, yeah. Um, and that was by... Was that by the Institute or by the Medicine Bar? Uh, I think maybe someone things. could jog our memory. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, but it originally started in Wensbury, and okay. then I think they moved it to Birmingham, and it was near the Custard Factory. That's right, yeah, which is, I think, the Medicine Bar was around. Yeah, there. that's it, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, so what sampler was you using, what, and, and, and how did you kind of fall into the studio then? Okay, um, I mean, because I was doing like collabs with people, I suppose I relied on a, a lot of what they were using, but I seem to remember I actually ventured into the world of production on my own and I actually purchased an EMU sampler. Okay. Big mistake. <laughs> big, big, big mistake. What, the 64? Yeah. EMU 64? Yeah, because at the time everyone was using an Akai. Akai. Yeah. And I, I don't know why I decided to be different and just go with an EMU <laughs> because then people would say, oh, we'll do a remix or you could do a remix and then you tell them you've got an EMU and they're like, oh, I haven't got an EMU. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I won't go down that route again. <laughs> and tell us about, like... Um, I mean, one of the biggest parties that you played at was Pandemonium. That was like 30, 40,000. That would be, f yeah. Well, that Tell was, us about that. that. Well, Fantasia, that was the one that was 40,000. Okay. But Pandemonium, they, they've done some big parties as well. I mean, they're still going as well, the guys Paul, Mark and Paul, fully enough. Um, they've got a big event coming up 4th of November, the Coalition, and they're actually doing it with Amnesia House and a few other people. So that's going to be like Neville. a massive I'm, I'm, night. I'm, yeah, Neville, I, haven't, I mean, those guys, like I said, Eclipse, when we were doing what we were doing, it was unbelievable. Right now, this is Blueprint. This is the legendary Pilgrim Rave Jungle DJ in the Radar Building. Blueprint, that's what we do every Friday. I'm going to play one more tune. Then we're going to go to some of your influences. And then we're going to have a little bit more of an interview. And then we're going to go back to back. Let you little have a little 20 minutes by okay. yourself. Get warmed up. And then I'm going to jump in on the mix. Right now, keep sharing, people. It's Ray Keith. It's Radar London. And also, it's Blueprint Live. Keith. Oh, Radar.
Bear people uh, giving shouts out. Mark Supremacy, Simon Collins, DJ Gremlin, Kerry Joyce, big up your chest, bass baby. Oh, Richie Rolling Swift. And there's a whole heap of reminiscing right now going on about the old days up north. So, Paul, we are very, very blessed to have you in the building right now. Jump back on the mic, my friend. What do you think was the definitive point in, um, in, in raving for you and Jungle? What, what do you think the best, like, you know, 94, 95, unbelievable times. What do you think, I mean, Quest kind of set the president presidents of it yeah. because they were resident. Tell us a little bit about Amazon because they kind of came along. It wasn't the same people, was it? Um, yeah, it was actually. Yeah. Okay. Because I thought I, I, I thought Gerald had something to do with that. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Yeah. And Kerif, who was like one of the guys who was like behind the scenes at Quest as well, so he was involved in Amazon. But um, yeah, pretty much the same people. It's just that they took a different direction with their lineups and used more like Kenny Ken, Brocky. Uh, because I suppose in the days of Quest, you got the likes of like Swift and Brocky that weren't really getting much airplay at Quest. Um, you got Mickey Finn, Darren J. So yeah, they went because I think back then, round about that time of '95, the music started to turn, went more jungle, and you had a lot more people who were breaking through as well. Yeah. So you had definitely. people like Biggs and uh, who was who was more of a resident there. Uh, jazzy as well, so they were more like the residents that were playing at Amazon. I mean, uh, the the original uh, MCs th that came from the Brom area, if you could just mention some of them from the original days. Yeah, so you had a few MCs like uh, Bassman, who's still like rocking the, the mic these days. You got Lenny as well, the Godfather. Big up Lenny D. From back in the day when I was raving and, and doing eclipse and amnesia, he was one of the godfathers that was yeah. pretty much on everything. Yeah, but you, yeah. got, you got Majika as well, he's still doing his thing as well. Yeah. You got uh, Majika, he's out there doing his raveology thing and uh, pushing new boundaries. Uh, you've got Ransky as well, he was another big name as well. Um, so yeah, you, and then you've got like the people who were like, behind like Quest who were emceeing there, like Scarlet, you've got Robbie D, you've got uh, Joker as well, some of the original boys. Yes, and what are they up to now? Is there a, ha, has there been any reunions or uh, a Quest reunion? Not really, no, because uh, I think one of the last Quest reunions there was, uh, probably going back oh, maybe about five years, um, I think it's one of those things that with Jez, Quest has got this status out there and he likes to keep it as it is, remembered how it was, whereas I know a lot of people have, have dragged things back out the cupboard. And, and they haven't worked. They yeah. haven't worked. Sometimes they've not been as good as what they used to be and sometimes it's best to like leave things as they were. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a reflection on the tape packs, isn't it, from back in the day when you when you listen to some of the stuff that went on. Yeah. And, and when you listen to all those original MCs, and it's funny, I was speaking to Malin, um, who's from DMZ, and obviously he's big within the whole dubstep thing, and he's doing what he's doing. And, and that, those guys used to buy all them tape packs and listen yeah. to us all playing, and that's how they'd get their inspiration. Do you yeah, know what I, mean? I mean, I've still got many of those tape packs up in my loft as well, because uh, a lot of those I used to keep for memorabilia, and I've actually had some where um, I've passed them on to a, a guy I know called Simon, and basically he's converting them all over at the moment onto MP3, so... They're all being shared on my uh, Facebook page at the Richard. moment. So uh, anyone I'll who's have to grab some... some of them off of you. Yeah. That'd be blinding. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. I've, I've stuck a few up out there. There's one that's uh, doing the rounds at the moment where gold is actually emceeing for Randall. Wow. So I shared that on uh, Randall's page, and a few people have been like, wow. They didn't know that Goldie was that MC back then. Yeah, no, I mean, everybody everybody used to just pitch in and do what they used to do. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Which is, which is amazing. Also... Um, who would you like to thank along this journey that you've been on? I mean, you've had, as a as a producer, you, you, you had some big tunes, like I said, on Back to Basics. Yeah. Anyone you'd like to thank along the way? Um, really, just the people that support me. I mean, I know that there's some true people out there that follow me uh, who, uh, you know, over the years, they've been there religiously, like Dave Silk. I mean, he's one. Uh, he's, he's a true soldier. Uh, I'd just like to thank my wife as well, Strawberry. She's very supportive in everything that I do. Uh, but, yeah, I've got, like, a good group of people around me as well. Uh, Stardust, Glen Aston, uh, Carl Rawlings, uh, people from Payback Promotions. So, uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of people. And I know that there's going to be someone later who's going to be, oh, why didn't you mention me? But it's one of those things. There's just too many people. You know who you are. So, big up. And also, um, tell us a little bit about this transition. You're making kind of new school jungle now. Yeah. And, and we, we had a little bit of chat, uh, chat about that. 
tell us a little bit about some of the production that you're doing at the moment and who yeah. you're involved with. Okay, so at the moment, I mean, uh, I've got a track that's going to be landing soon on uh, Jungle Alliance. Uh, it's a track that I actually made uh, with the guys from Back to Basics. Uh, I never did anything with it. I sat on it for many years. I even forgot about it until about probably a year back. Is that the guys from Brighton? Yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So it's going to be coming out on an EP that they're going to be doing soon. Uh, yeah. Cosine, and Cosine and Dalit. Big up Cosine and Dalit. We're going to get them on the show very, very soon. Another lot from who's been flying the flag hard yeah. for Jungle, and also they t they put their independent nights on. You know, what I mean? yeah, definitely. So uh, that's going to be landing soon. So that's an original track from back in '93. It's just got that typical old school like '93 Jungle sound to it. Um, so that's one to look out for called Run Come Follow Away. Um, also as well I'm working on something at the moment with a producer called Dom so he's done a lot of stuff with Aries in the past so that's something that's uh, in the in the making at the moment as we speak so uh, I had some form of a structure that came back to me yesterday it just needs a few tweaks and I'm sure I'll be playing that very soon God bless you my friend right we're gonna go to one of your influence tunes we're gonna play them back to back and then we'll come back and have a look, little chat and then get right into the mix. Tell us a little bit about, well, you did tell us a little bit about this tune. So this is the first rave tune yeah. that you heard in the hip-hop uh, club. And, and what was it about it that kind of triggered it and thought, this is something different? Yeah, damn. So this was like a Donnie Snow way back. And uh, just the beats on it, but you've got the, uh, you just got that like, bass sound that came in and it was just, it just flowed nice. Uh, there was no vocals involved, although I do believe that there was a vocal mix of it that came out. But um, there was just something that just caught me about the track. Right. Okay. And I suppose after hearing it probably like 10, 15 times, it just got drilled into me that, yeah, it kind of stuck. This is, this is something different. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah. Right now, this is Blueprint. This is what we do on a Friday. This is the legendary rave jungle DJ Pilgrim in the building. Yeah, if you don't know, get to know. Run, go tell your friend. Right now, we're live on Facebook, bigging up everybody that's involved. And we are going to play some of the influences right now from DJ Pilgrim. Keep it locked. Keith. Picking up everybody that's tuned in right now. A couple of name checks we'll get through you in the mix in a little while. What a tune this was. No way back, you know. I remember her hearing this, and actually, when I used to go, because I used to play at the Bra Bla Braintree Barn, and Mr. C used to play, play there, Evil Eddie Richards. Um, 
there's a whole heap of man passing shoe, but these, these, and also I used to go to a place called Vinyl Zone, uh, yeah. Jazzy M, and I used to go and buy records from them because you used to kind of go on a on a record spree, shopping spree yeah. on a Saturday. So picking up all the original um, record shops from back in the day. I mean, this this was an un unbelievable piece of music, right at kind of uh, 88, 89, right? Yeah, this was definitely. The, this is the, the the hardcore rave scene. We're just going to flip the script, and I'm going to play another tune. Um, now, tell us about this tune, the After Dark, Edge of Darkness. I mean, what a label. Yeah, so with this, this is more like uh, when, uh, I suppose, the rave stuff, it kind of came away from, like, the, the kick drum, like you're hearing on the Adonis track, and it went a bit more breakbeat. So with this, this was probably about, I'd say, the, uh, the 92... Late 91, early 92 era, where you'd got like the likes of the, the Fantasia events that were very big, you'd got the, the Eclipse in Coventry. So I think this was probably about where like Rave, I suppose, was at its peak. No, most definitely. And you had all them tunes like um, Elevation, and um, even we, were t we had the Rat Pack on last week, and we were talking about Travis and Satin Storm. Yeah. And that was kind of those ra those early rave labels, I suppose. Well, there was Prodigy as well. You'd got, yeah. like, um, Your Love. You'd got uh, Charlie as well. So back then, they were, like, big tracks as well. And um, obviously, they've made it mainstream now, and those tracks are, like, they, they get played everywhere, every time when there's an old-school night, but... Back. Even Shades of Rhythm, Enjoy, yeah. we can't... All Bizarre of Ink. Bizarre Ink, all of that lot, do you know what I mean? It was yeah. just amazing. Right now, this is After Dark Remix and After Dark Records, and these are some of the influences from our very special guest today, Rave Jungle DJ Pilgrim. Keep it locked, it's Blueprint, people. Keith You know what, Paul, I'm going to pull this one up because that was the remix and this is the original. And I thought the, the, the people out there need to hear the original because the original was banging, you know what I mean? This is the original that we used to play. I think this was on a green label. I'm sure it was with the ADR... Um, uh, uh, what was That's it? it, it had like the moon and the stars on it. Yeah, and it was just crazy. And I just wanted everyone to feel the energy of this original tune. If you don't know, get to know Pilgrim, Rave jungle dj yeah from back in the day with all the or other original men actually there were some other geezers as well that i forgot about and um penfold yeah used to do the purex nights 
Purex. Bigging up Purex as well. We can't forget all of them, man. But yeah, just listening to the breaks on this, you know what I mean? It was just unbelievable. Keep sharing this, people. Some influences from Pilgrim. Keith. Oh. See, to me, Paul, the, the, these type of tunes, they were definitely game-changer tunes. I sent this one out to DJ Flex because I was just talking about that Soul Pride break. Yeah. And the way he'd kind of cut it up, chopped it, and the skip with it and the roll with it. When you listen to that shit, it's just like, wow. Yeah, And, yeah. you know, people like him, this guy, Edge of Darkness, come together, my bridge in Fotech. They can't, and also, even if you look at uh, the early four hero Tom and Jerry stuff, um, and even Ibiza, you listen to the breaks and you just think, fuck, they were so far ahead of the game. Yeah. And here we are in 2017, and some of these young kids now are, are emulating what's going on. Do you know what I mean? So we have to give thanks. I mean, bigging up this tune and bigging up, um, I think the guy's from Clacton, lives in Clacton on scene now and, and I think you were saying what was the original guy's name? Dale, Dave Charlesworth so he was the guy I think you who said, used to run the label but, right, they, yeah. but they were some artists and they used to bring the white labels into us if you don't know get to know history blueprint this is what we're talking about original jungle business this is like pre-jungle like um, like we said from the rave days and these tunes are so fucking important that that they don't really get play that's what I'm saying when you go out sometimes you don't really hear these tunes no you don't I and that's the thing uh, I suppose because over the years I've been known to still be playing the old school stuff because I was playing a lot of old school nights like flashback so when things like Quest finished uh, you got flashback and other nights that came out the woodwork that recreated that old uh, that old scene from uh, way back then and uh, they were playing like a lot of like the old school sounds from those nights and I suppose because I got 
residency at those kind of clubs, I got labelled then for playing old school, but I've kind of come away from that now because now I'm just doing what I want to do, playing what I want to play, and uh, I'm just loving the jungle scene at the moment, this new, fresh jungle sound. It's just, uh, just can't get enough of it. Yeah, regenerating. Picking up everybody that loves the old school jungle vibes, we're going to play another killer. Now, tell me about this tune, a guy called Gerald, 28... Gun bad boy. Where did you hear this tune? Yeah, so uh, this was in my days of Quest, and I suppose I used to use this uh, as my uh, my intro. I used to scratch in like the beginning of it, the, the bad boy. I used to cut it up, um, but uh, yeah, it was just a wicked track. It was just very minimal, but that was like one of my first uh, early jungle influences. I would say that I could recall off the top of my head. Wicked. Well, straight after this, we're gonna let, we're gonna roll this tune out, and we're gonna get in the mix. Gonna do let you do a little twenty minutes by yourself, okay? Because you've come down so uh, so far, old school jungle, and then I'm, we'll do it back to back for the last half hour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pilgrim, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. No, I'm, I'm glad we, we, we get to do a little mix-up as well, a little bit longer mix than usual, because um, it's just nice to just try and squeeze, squeeze everything in. But it's Friday, the weekend's here, people. Keep sharing. Pilgrim in the bu building, legendary, yet Raven Jungle DJ. And right now we're going to do a little little 20 minute by him and then we're going to go into the mix still for a whole hour back to back at half past three but we'll let you do the intro and we're going to play this one one of my favorite tunes from back in the day big enough guy called gerald and big enough all our listeners on radar blueprint keep it locked keith I don't think you even know. This tune, when this tune used to come in the dance in Rage, when Fabian Groover, Groove Rider used to play this tune, man was skanking. Man was all on one leg doing the hop or something like that. I think back in the day, I even had long hair and locks like soul to soul to us. And you know them days have gone. As you can see, the evidence is there. There's no hair left. Well, apart from facial hair, that is. But anyway, I thought I've got to play this from the beginning. Because a guy called Gerald, most of you know a guy called Gerald for Voodoo Ray and his house things. But don't forget, these men were original jungle business. And their label, if I remember rightly, Paul was called Juice Box, right? Yeah, it's, it's, like it's been a while since I've seen any of the labels because we all play USBs. Listen, if you're tuned in right now, Rungo, tell your friend, this is Blueprint Fridays. We bring you the original dons from the rave and jungle music scene. Yeah, and Pilgrim is one of them. And this tune is an absolute iconic tune. C please keep sharing and we'll be in the mix on the back of this. I had to pull this one up for myself because it's Friday. Keith.
thief already paid off. Don't worry, I'm not having a career change or anything. I'm going to start spitting or emceeing. <laughs> Everyone see me grab the mic thinking, shit, Ray's going to brock out two lyrics. Grime it out. I don't think so. Right, anyway. Um, I'm just giving a few shouts out whilst my man's on the decks there. Right now, you're tuned to Blueprint, Pilgrim on the decks, just doing his thing. Send this one out to Mark Sweeney, Dave Silk, Jamie Kelly, Carl Rawlings. Uh, Dave O'Brien and Jay Anthony. Picking up the bass, baby. Uh, she seems to have lost her link, but I think she's going to find it. Dave O'Brien, big up your chest. Let's keep sharing, people. This is Blueprint. This is what we do on a Friday, yeah? Ray Keys in the building, alongside my good friend Pilgrim. Ian Boa, those quest sets were uh, from Pilgrim were inspirational. Paul tries to big up your chest, and he's saying, big up DJ Trickster. Simon Scott, oi oi, right? Keep those shouts coming out and we will keep sharing, people. I'm going to see at least 150 people active right now. Keep sharing. We're already up to about two and a half days, so thank you very much. Pilgrim, bossing two tune right now. Keep those shouts coming out and we'll keep them coming in. Michael Renard and Richie Rowland Swift. We've got the chest, Chris Harris as well. Blueprint, some jungle business. Ray Keith.
Milgram in the building right now. Send this one out to Jason Sean, Pete Casson, Dave Silk, Ian Boa, Michael Reneed. Keep those shouts coming in, people. It's Friday. Raw, Dan's bossing two pins right now. It's coming like... <laughs> <laughs> there must be some tennis going on around here on the Summertime, that's how we like it. Keep those shouts coming in, please, people. Right now, Pilgrim is bossing two tune on radar. Some original jungle business from back in the day. Paul Trice, big shout out to you. Tim Ramsdor. Keep those shouts coming out, please. Where's my ladies at? A few more ladies. Shout out, please. <laughs> Jungle, this is what it's all about. Cos Lee says, killer beats. Michael Rene Drain says, bring the fire. This is what we do on Blueprint, don't worry, I haven't changed my daytime job. I'm not MCing or some anything like that. I'm just shouting out some shouts. Keep those shouts coming in and we'll, we'll name check you right now on Blueprint. This is what we do on Fridays between three and five, the Jungle Influences. Right now you're being entertained by the mighty pilgrim, Wolverham Wolverhampton's finest. Trust me, send this one out to Gus Brass, Brasington. Bigging up the Cool and Flex as well. Also, bigging up Chris Brummer Andrews. Bigging up my UCJ family. And also, bigging up my AWOL family as well. Richie Johnston says, uh, Paul is killing it without a doubt. If you know about jungle music, then you know about Pilgrim. Send this one out to Simon Inns, Ryan Nelson. I'm just name checking you as you're coming through right now. Please keep sharing us on Facebook, people. Run, go tell your friend. Blueprint, Ray Keith. This is what we do on Fridays. My very special guest today, Pilgrim in the building. If you know about Quest, you know about Pandemonium, you know about all these original jungle days. Keep it locked. Simon Inns, who's locked in from Moscow. If you want to hashtag us, if you're in a different country, that's all good. You might even be down the road, but you can tell us where you're from. So this one out to Itis as well. Kerry Joyce is back. Jason Chance, pick up your chest. Simon Collins, pick up your chest. Keep those shouts coming in. Blueprint, Pilgrim, Ray Case, Blueprint.
send this one out to Emerson Lake, Yamawaki Lysuki. Also picking up Kerry Joyce, David O'Brien. Please keep sending those shouts in. Jay Robertson, pick up your chest from Perth, Australia. Wow. That's what I'm talking about. Picking up the original 94 junglers around the world right now. Picking up the Pandemonium crew, also the Quest crew. Also all the original Midlands raves back in the day. Keep those shouts coming in, people. Right now it's Pilgrim Live on Radar Radio. Blueprint, Ray Keith. Picking up Lisa Morgan, Lyndon, Denny, Park. So Kerry Joyce, Frequency Formation. Pick up your chest. Jungle List Network as well. Clothing, big up your chest. Also picking up the Fight Club. Picking up everybody that was at Box Park last week. Picking up my brethren Dino. Keep the fire coming, keep the love hearts coming, people. Send this one out to James Oldfield and Chris Ooten. I'm picking up the backroom staff, bringing in the drinks. God bless you. Send this one out to Tim Ramsell. The Pilgrim's Choice definitely ain't cheese. That's right. Some, some original jungle business. Send this one out to DeVista White, Simon Scott. We're smashing up the place right now, trust me. I'm even going to have a little cheeky beer and it's a Friday. Send this one out to Simon Scott as well. Keep those shouts coming, thanks a lot, sir. Why are you not got a drink? I know you've got your pins, so I'm not asking you. Keep those shouts coming in, people. And let's keep sharing. It's Ray Keith, it's Blueprint. This is what we do Fridays, yeah? Picking up my Radar family as well. Also, my Dread Recordings family. Picking up the Marga Man coming up yesterday, doing the Dread show. Send this one out to Andy Felton. Tunes on fire. Let's let the music do the talking. Blueprint. <laughs> Phobia, Felix Robbins, also Alex Dunn, Carl Rawlings, Vanessa Rayfold, Sophie Dobbs. Keep, where's that Friday love, people? And get a name check. Friday. Send this one out to Simon Scott. Paul Trice, bigging up the Pilgrim. Bigging up Carl Rawlings as well. Once again, bigging up DJ Phobia. And also the Clacton on scene massive. Mark Supremacy from Holland is loving it. Bigging up my bridge in Mala. Once again, bringing up, bringing up my Dread Recordings family. Keep it locked, people. Let's keep it moving. Keep those name checks coming in and keep sharing.
Keith. Right, keep those shouts coming out. I'm going to do a little back-to-back -back with the Mighty Pilgrim. I thought I'd play this. Um, big shout out to Sophie Dobbs, Michael Rainid, David Dance, Simon <laughs> Wiley, Danny K. Booker. We're taking it right back right now. A little half an hour. Back to back, Pilgrim and Ray keep some original jungle business. This is the information center. Keep it locked. Keith.
Peace. For those of you who don't know this tune, yeah, this, this is a big tune, you know, MB, big up your chest. Original jungle business. Right now, Pilgrim in the building, alongside Ray Keith, back to back. Blueprint, this is what we do Fridays. Run, go tell your friend. Ringer, love this tune. Big up my good friend, Marlon. Pilgrim, Ray Keith, back to back. Run, go tell your friend. Some original jungle business right now. Radar Radio, Fridays. Keep it locked, keep those shouts coming in and we will give you a name check. Send this one out to Simon Collins, Kerry Joyce, Costellel, Glenn Brown. Keep them coming in, people, and please keep sharing. Paul tries to pick up your chest. Also, Sharon Davis. Keep sharing, people. Andy Felton, big up your chest. This must be bringing some memories right now. You should be skanking on one leg. It's Friday, people. Run, go tell your friend. Blueprint. Send this one out to Stuart Guest. Jason Tomo. Keep those shouts coming in. We've got about 20 minutes left, people. Blueprint. This is what we do Fridays. Run, go tell your friend.
Right now, we're picking up everybody that's been sharing us on Facebook. If you don't know, get to know this is the original blueprint business. I thought I'd play this tune, Bug Con and the Plastic Jam, made in two minutes. One of the big tunes that used to be played at Quest back in the day. Picking up all the original DJs that used to pass to. Right now, you've been in tune to myself and Pilgrim, a little back to back. I'm taking it a little bit back. Because that's where it needs to be, so you can remember. Picking up our brothers and sisters around the world, we know the struggle. Let's keep it moving, let's keep that love flowing. It's Friday, it's Blueprint. Please keep sharing the love on Facebook right now. This is a fucking tune, I don't care. Oh my days. I'm going to pick up Lepelo Blanco for this tune. And the Plastic Jam. Some of the original mans then from back in the day. Picking up Fabio. And Groove Rider, I used to write it, used to champion this tune. Oh gosh. I got um I got goosebumps, you know, but fuck it. I had to start that one again because I'm just having a little private moment, but I'm sharing that private moment with you. Because these tunes, even though like boy, a man's in his middle age now, do you know what I'm saying? I won't mean, say no numbers. But you know, you still feel the music, it don't matter how old you are, or where you come from. What creed, colour, gender, we don't give a fuck. At the end of the day, it's all about being one. And this is what makes us one. It don't matter what religion you are, music brings people together. And right now, through these difficult times, this is what we need. Big up your chest, jungle massive around the world. Rave jungle is around the world. We love you. There's bare love coming out through the speakers right now. Rungo, tell your friend. Yeah, made in two minutes. This is what it's all about. Bug Khan and the plastic jam. And I give you the mighty pilgrim here. You want to say anything, my friend? Just everyone who's been locked in, just thank you for uh, tuning in and uh, supporting me always. God bless you, my friend. Thank you very much. Ray Keys Pilgrim, this is what we do. Oi, oi. Friday. Some original business, the influences of jungle music from back in the day. Keep it locked. We've got about 10 minutes to go. Keep sharing, people. Keys. Oh.
for everybody right now that's uh, saluting Genocide 2. My good friend Chris. God bless you, my friend. Genocide 2, if you don't know, get to know. Right now it's Pilgrim Ray Keep back to back, a little special old school one. Hardcore jungle. Picking up everybody that's been sharing. Picking up my good friend DJ Flex, he knows, innit? Keep sharing on Facebook, people. We've had an absolute amazing time. We've got a little Mr. Kirk's Nightmare coming in. How long have we got? Five minutes. We might be able to squeeze one more in there. God bless you. Thanks for sharing us on Facebook. We're uh, just under 5K, so thank you very much for everyone that's been loving it. Pure quality, people are saying. Up next is the mighty Sir DJ Corey. Right now it's Blueprint. Run, go tell your friends some jungle, rave, hardcore business. Picking up everybody that's got involved. And picking up everybody that's supporting vinyl. Still, don't forget, we'll be back next Friday. This is what we do, Blueprint 3 till 5. My very special guest, Chrissy Chris, next week. Boom. We've got some special guests passing through. From myself and Pilgrim, we're going to play one more. And peace, we're out of here. But, uh, like I said, radar's your... Right through the weekend, and DJ Corey's up next. From Blueprint and us and Radar, we're out of here. Peace. Son is dead. Blueprint with Ray Keith. Keith, Keith. Mr. Cook? Yes? Your son is dead. Come down to the station house. Come down to the station house. Come down to the station house. Your son is dead. Come down to the station house.
Blueprint with Ray Keith. 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 Picking up my very special guest today. Picking up my very special guest today, DJ Pilgrim. We're going to end off with one of the original M1 tunes from up north, the Ant Hill Mob. Oh gosh, this is a tune. Up next, DJ Corey. Picking up my radar family, my Dread Recordings family. Peace, we're out of here. Have yourselves a great weekend. Blueprint with Ray Keith. 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 Knock a clean.
things. Way too easy. I bought reaper, but to the fear that I say, Corey. 